Lovely to see Megan Kelly back with us, of course, from the United States. The freedom-loving lady, well, she spent some time in France, and that was a bit of fun. Our full chat is up at skynews.com.au, but the highlights on the telly right now, how do we not talk about Harry and Meghan? They don't want to work. It's the same reason they left the royal family. They only wanted to wear the crown jewels. They didn't actually want to toil away at the ribbon-cutting ceremonies. And the same problem plagued them and their new employers once they got here stateside. The fact that she couldn't even make 12 episodes without complaining is absolutely pathetic. Right, 12 episodes, I do that in two weeks. What is she complaining about? And the problem is once you have an actual job as opposed to a stupid lifestyle website that nobody looks at, or I don't even know what Harry's ever done, uh, it actually requires some effort, some elbow grease. You know, you have to prepare. And the biggest offense I heard about in the revelations about this podcast that failed was the fact that she committed a fraud. There are some pieces you put out where you must use a producer to do some of, forgive me, the less important interviews. That's just the way these big pieces go. Not in a podcast that has two interviews when you only have to do 12. I'm talking about an in-depth, several long hour documentary. You might have a producer do a piece or two, an interview or two. You would never misrepresent that you did it. You would never cut your own questions into the interview and try to pawn it off on your audience like it was yours. That's grossly unethical. And if she did that with Spotify's help, Spotify has some answering to do because that's a fraud on your audience. But that's how lazy she is. And the reason she didn't want to do it herself is because A, she's she's lazy, right, number one. But B, she didn't want to talk to the people who weren't important. She only wanted to talk to Mariah Carey and Serena Williams and Taylor Swift, who gave her the middle finger and didn't even respond directly, but had a rep send her back a uh, it's a no uh, letter to her. And I guarantee you, Paul, they had the same problem in gearing up for season two. No one wanted to be with her. She didn't have the cachet she had when she first left the royal family claiming racism and mental health problems. Now she just had to make it on her own. And their reputations have been so damaged here. All they got was I'll pass. Yeah, there's a million other podcasts they can do if they want to tell stories about how you know, terrible their childhood was. There's plenty of other opportunities. But I like what was said by uh, the United Talent Agency CEO. He's in trouble for saying this, but he says, turns out Meghan Markle was not a great audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. And, you know, just because you're famous doesn't mean, doesn't make you great at something. Why is he in trouble for saying the truth? Because they don't. Hollywood's not based on truth ever, any any piece of it. So God bless the man for saying what we all know is true. But, you know, it really speaks to sort of the juxtaposition between the positioning of this podcast and what the reality was. She wasn't good at it. She was artificial. She was acting. She was over the top. Her fake saccharine voice. Go back and look at the clip where Mariah Carey says to her, you're a diva too. She was saying to Mariah, you're a diva. Mariah said, you're a diva. And, oh, was my idol <laughs> calling me out? Just the over-the-top dramatic. She was pathetic. She wasn't good at it. He was right. Um, and so what did we see in the press? She got an award for, like, top podcast by some group I never heard of. That's how Hollywood, like, the agents and the people around her manipulate us, trying to make us believe this thing is a success. It's special. She's nailing it. And yet they weren't getting the downloads anytime after the first couple when people were tuning in because of curiosity. And they didn't get renewed because if there really was something special and award-winning about this thing, Spotify would have sucked up her laziness and put the team around her to make it successful. They didn't have the appetite because it was a loser and they knew it. Joe Biden, of course, is a historic president because he's the only person who can fall upstairs. But he's also uh, continuously lying about any knowledge uh, to do with his son, and that's getting worse by the day. Whistleblowers who are genuinely brave, not the ones who just anonymously kept dropping against Trump, uh, most of which was garbage. And then he was out there saying, God save the Queen. Another wonderful fortnight for the free world. God save the Queen, man. Don't have anything for you on that. I have no clue what was going on there. Why did he say that? Why, why does he say enjoy your senior year? Why does he say things like this? They come out of nowhere. And I do think, you know, I used to go visit my Nana. My Nana lived on her own till she was 100. And when she turned 101, she had to go in to the home, right, where she could get better medical care. And I heard things like that from some of her, you know, colleagues in the, in the <laughs> senior citizens home. Fellow <laughs> inmates. Right. I'm just saying that's the only time I've heard such nonsense get blurted out with absolutely no connection to what's 
happening in the room. Of course, the problem is he's the leader of the free world. Well, of course, the stress of the presidency, right? So we saw Barack Obama, fit bloke, go from sort of dark hair to grey hair in the space of his eight years. This bloke starts as a corpse. What is the expectation of him at the end of four, let alone eight? I, I've got two words for you. Kamala Harris. Uh. That's what truly strikes fear in the hearts of most Americans. And they need to get real honest with themselves about the fact that that's the reality if this guy gets reelected. It may not be death. I'm not wishing this man a, an untimely death. Of course not. But he is pushing 86 by the end of that second term. And we already see the mental deterioration. So he could be you know, pushed right out of office thanks to his cabinet members if he becomes incapacitated any further mentally. More than likely, if he gets reelected, they won't do that. We've seen we've seen what they've done to, with John Fetterman, this senator in the state of Pennsylvania who can't put two sentences together either. They just keep pushing him into the voting box so he can vote the way they want. So maybe they'll do that with Joe Biden. I don't know. But at this point, it does look a little like elder abuse to make this guy run again. He won't have a debate, even though 80 percent of Democrats want him to debate his Democratic challengers. He won't do it. And I really think their whole plan is working right now, Paul, which is get Trump to be the nominee on the GOP side. That'll motivate the voters. And Biden won't really have to run or put himself out there and put words together. 100 percent. California always uh, at the front of stupid things. And they've decided now to pass a new law that's particularly insane against parents who want to take care of their kids. This can't be allowed. This has to stop. It passed the House in the California State House, and now it's going to go to the Senate. And it would have to be signed by the governor who has presidential aspirations. And if this guy signs this, he's done. This isn't like, oh, trans people should get care, right? They call it gender affirming care. This is the California uh, lawmakers saying, if you don't affirm, quote, affirm your child's gender confusion, and they don't define what that means. It could mean you refuse to get his penis chopped off when he says, uh, you know, I, I'm a girl. Um, you could be labeled a child abuser. You could be treated as a criminal, the same as a sexual abuser of children. And anyone who has a duty to report, like a third party source, like a school or an advocacy organization, would be able to report you to the authorities as a child abuser. It, so the original bill was, let's just have whether they're affirming and offering gender affirming care as a factor, a custody battle judge might be able to consider. But then this guy, Scott Weiner, who I believe has no children, uh, added an amendment saying, let's take it one step further where we could label them child abusers. We'll wow. change the whole definition of abuse. And it got passed. These lawmakers actually passed it in the House in the state of California.